What's up YouTube, welcome back to Celio's Network. I am continuing my Sword and Shield TCG set review today, and we're going to be looking at all of the fighting type Pokemon from the set. Before we jump into that, quick shout out to PotownStore.com, your best place to get PTCGO codes. They've got the Meowth VMAX codes and the Alolan Sand Slash codes in stock. Also, Sword and Shield codes in stock right now. Uh, pretty much anything you could want for PTCGO and use code CLEO 5% off there. And then also FlipsideGaming.com or I write free articles and you can use code CLEO all caps for 10% off of any order, $10 or more over there. So, like I said, fighting type Pokemon today from Sword and Shield. Before we get into that, just a little bit of information on how I'm looking at these cards. So, I will be rating the cards based on their viability in the Ultra Prism through Sword and Shield standard format. Um, I will be omitting pre-evolution cards unless they are notable, so we don't have extra bulk to look at. And lastly, these are my opinions, so feel free to disagree. And also, uh, try to create some productive discussion in the comments below. So this is my legend, uh, one star to five star ratings. One star means the card is bulk and likely unplayable. Two stars means the card may have a niche use uh, depending on other cards being good or future cards or how the meta develops. Three stars means the card is pretty much average and I think it will see some play. Four stars, the card will see play and is overall above average. So four stars where I start guaranteeing that you'll see this card in tournament decks. And then five stars, the card is very good. It's potentially meta-defining. It will see play and it will see success. First, we're looking at Stone Journer, uh, basic Pokemon, fighting type 120 HP. It has one attack, fighting, fighting for wild tackle 70. This Pokemon does 10 damage to itself. Uh, this card is just not very great. Um, <laughs> 70 damage for two fighting is not a lot. Uh, it's kind of just outclassed by uh, Buzzwool from Forbidden Light, which does. Uh, 30 for one fighting, but then you have like things like Beast Energy and Deancey and Sledgehammer also has its extra effect on its uh, specific turn when your opponent's at four prizes. Um, so having only one attack, two energy for 70, and it does 10 damage to itself, it's pretty low HP. Two retreat cost, uh, just going to get one star for me, probably just bulk. Next, we've got a Mudsdale. Uh, 150 HP stage 1, 1 attack, double impact for fighting, fighting, fighting. It does 120 times the number of heads and you flip 2 coins. Uh, this card is complete trash, just 1 star, it's bulk. Next we've got Doug Trio, 90 HP stage 1, has 1 attack, mud bomb, fighting energy, does 60. Uh, just way too vanilla, outclassed by other things, just 1 star. Doug Trio is going to be bulk. So we've got through some bulk here, and now we're looking at our first fighting type V card. Uh, Regirock V, 220 HP, basic Pokemon fighting, of course. And it has two attacks. The first one, Fighting Colorless, does 30 damage plus 10 more for each damage counter on this Pokemon. And then Rock Tackle, Fighting Fighting Colorless, does 190 and 30 damage to itself. So, I thought about Regirock for a while, because it can look rather underwhelming. Um, the first attack can't put early pressure on unless your opponent has already hit into it. But, uh, so 220 HP is rather high. We have the, uh, the charm, or some sort of tool that raises HP by 30 coming out in this set. So it can have 250 uh, so it, it will take a hit from a lot of things, which means Raging Hammer can then do a lot of damage. Um, and we also have to keep in mind that fighting type Pokemon have Karate Belt. So Rock Tackle, if you're behind on prizes, can actually be used for just 2 energy. And it does 190, then plus Deancey buff, that's 210, plus Martial Arts Dojo, uh, even more damage since it's not an Ultra Beast. Uh, so I do think the card has some potential. It's uh, probably not going to have like any decks built solely around it, uh, or any uh, highly viable decks built solely around this card. Uh, but I do think it could be used in a fighting type archetype. It's it's solid. It's pretty average, um, and I do think it could see some play. It's not like awful. It's not amazing. So three stars for Reggie Rock V. 
Next, we've got Santa Conda. Unfortunately, we're going back to the one star bulk. Uh, 130 HP stage one. And this card, let me just preface, I think this card is very interesting and is close to being good. So Sandbags, uh, this Pokemon takes 30 less damage from attacks. And then Power Press, uh, Fighting Fighting for 60 um, if this Pokemon has one fighting energy more than this attack's cost attached to it, this attack does 70 more damage. So, let's say we have two fighting energy and a karate belt and we're behind on prizes. So that would um, fulfill the energy requirement for the extra damage. So, with two fighting energy and a karate belt, it's doing 130. And the Pokemon itself has 130 HP. Uh, essentially, it needs to be hit with 160 to be one shot because of sandbags. Um, so let's say best case scenario, we need to be hit with 160 to be one shot and with two energy and a karate belt, we're doing 130 with a Deancey on board 150 and we have to be behind on prizes. Um, so 190 with the martial arts dojo in play as well for two energy on a stage one, two energy and a karate belt on a stage one and we're behind on prizes. And the stage one can realistically just get one shot next turn. Um, I think that's a lot to put into this card uh, just to do 190 circumstantially for two basic energy. So two so two energy attachments. In a, um, and it's not even an archetype where we can excel energy onto the card like easily with something like Metal Saucer. Or something like Welder. Uh, so Sandaconda, I think it's very close to being good and it has cool ideas here, but it's not going to cut it for me. So just one star. I don't think it will see play. Next, we've got Rhyperior. Um, basically, let's just run through this one real quick. 190 HP, so it's kind of high HP. And then we have two attacks that don't do anything amazing. And if I'm going up to a stage 2 Pokemon, I want to be doing something very good. I want to have great utility or a very, very efficient attack or its ability better be insane. And this card is doing 90 for 3 and 120 for 4 with potential extra bench damage. So. I am not feeling the Rhyperior. Um, just, it does not do enough to justify playing a stage 2 Pokemon, so it's just a 1 star. Next, we've got another Sandaconda. Uh, 140 HP. Coil for 1 colorless does 10. During your next turn, this Pokemon's attacks do 120 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. And then Skull Bash, 100 for fighting colorless, colorless. So, the problem here is... Uh, the Sandaconda has to survive for Coil to work, or it can be gusted around and then Coil's effect is gone. Um, in Expanded, maybe with Focus Sash, this could have some potential, but you're still taking a turn of doing nothing to just potentially do more damage next turn that can be negated by Ranger or Gust Effect or whatever. Uh, so Sandaconda, this one as well, is just one star. Uh, Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan... Uh, they both kind of go off of each other to boost their attack damage. Hitmonlee, uh, has cooperation attack, fighting, fighting, colorless for 80. And if you have Hitmon Chan, this should say if you have Hitmon Chan on your bench, I believe. Um, maybe it's Hitmonlee. Maybe it just needs two Hitmonlees. I believe it should say Hitmon Chan, though. Um, if you have Hitmon of, uh, we'll figure it out later, I guess, on your bench, this attack does 80 more damage, regardless if it needs Hitmonlee or Hitmon Chan. Regardless of that translation is a mistake or not, uh, fighting, fighting colorless for 160 is not amazing. If you wanted to go up to fighting, fighting karate belt to use this attack when you're behind, um, 160, then martial arts dojo 200, then DNC 220, um, does seem rather good. But uh, like I said. For the Sandaconda, this is it's on a low HP Pokemon, so all those resources are just gonna get blown up next turn. Um, and we don't have amazing fighting type acceleration. So uh Hitmonlee is probably just bulk one star. And then we have Hitmonchan, which also reads if you have Hitmonlee on your bench, which makes me think the Hitmonlee is supposed to say Hitmonchan. Hopefully you follow. I'm saying a lot of Hitmons here. Uh, but Hitmonchan, Cooperation Beat for one Fighting Energy does 20, and then 20 more if you have Hitmonlee on your bench. So that's 40 for one Fighting Energy. Um, we can do 30 for one Fighting Energy with Buzzwell from Forbidden Light, and it, we don't need to have a bad Pokemon on our bench to do that. So... 
I think we'll just stick with Buzzwell from Forbidden Light. Mock Cross 60 for 2 energy, also nothing special. So just one star for both of the Hitmons. Next we've got Claydol. Uh, Claydol is 120 HP stage 1. First attack, Psybeam 30 uh, for a colorless energy. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. And then Explosion Fighting Fighting does 200. And this Pokemon does 120 damage to itself. Um, so I think Explosion could have some potential. So I'm giving Claydol two stars for that reason. Um, you could potentially give it extra HP with uh, the tool I was mentioning earlier that gives Pokemon plus 30 HP. Um, you could attach it in just so you, you don't award a prize card. You could want to go behind on prizes and then send up a doll when it uh, blows itself up. Because for Fighting Fighting or Fighting Karate Belt, plus Dojo buffing it by 40 and then Deancey buffing it by 20, you could do 260 here and just knock out your own Claydol, but you're doing 260. Uh, so I do think this Claydol has some potential, giving it two stars. Next is Stonejourner V, 220 HP basic Pokemon. Uh, guard Press is actually pretty solid, fighting energy to do 40, and then during your opponent's next turn, any damage done to this Pokemon is reduced by 20. Uh, so a nice little 40 poke in the middle, extra from Martial Arts and Deancey, of course. And then Mega Kick just does kind of a vanilla 150 for 3, which is very, very good if uh, you're hitting weakness, but just kind of an average attack if you're not hitting weakness. So Stonejourner V, uh, just 2 stars. Uh, it does have the VMAX, of course, which is why Stonejourner V will be played. So Stonejourner VMAX, I'm going to give three stars. Um, 330 HP, which is a huge reason for why it's playable. It just has massive HP. Uh, and then it has two attacks. So Stone Gift, attach a fighting energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon, then heal 120 from that Pokemon. And Max Rock does 200 for three. So you have a pretty decent damage output. You have an attack, you have a type with support, right? We have the DNC, we have Martial Arts Dojo. We have Karate Belt, and then you have tanking capabilities because of its HP and because of Stone Gift. Uh, so I do think Stone Journer VMAX is pretty solid. I don't think it's like meta defining or anything, and I, I'm not going to guarantee that Archetype will see success, but I do think Stone Journer VMAX will get some play. So I was kind of between rating it three or four stars, but the card isn't like anything amazing. It's just a solid card. So I'm going to give it three stars, and maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe I should have given it four, but I think three is. Um, a decent rating for the card. Like I said, it's not amazing, but it, it will see some play. Next is Grapple Lock. Uh, Grapple Locked. Uh, a very interesting card, just like uh, Sandaconda and just like Claydol. Uh, but unlike Sandaconda, I think this could see some play. So, um, Tough Swing's just 130 for three. Kind of a vanilla attack, but the Stage 1 Pokemon Grapple Locked has a very unique attack. Fighting Fighting, Octopus Grip. All of the defending Pokemon's attacks cost two colorless more, and it can't retreat. This effect stays on the defending Pokemon as long as this Grapple Locked is your active Pokemon. So if they can't gust around the Grapple Locked, the defending Pokemon costs two colorless more, and it can't retreat. Now, I'm not exactly sure where this would be good. It's just a very, very solid effect of an attack. Maybe in something like Birds, or maybe in something that you can... Uh, put Omastar into so then they can't use catchers to get around the grapple locked um, I think this is very very solid you could uh, pair it with like uh, energy removal or milling or whatever but I just think this attack has some sort of niche use in the future so two stars for grapple locked solely because of the octopus grip and last we, lastly, we've got a pseudo Wudo, 100 HP, double draw, draw two cards, and then flail, 10 times the amount of damage counters on this Pokemon. <laughs> Nothing too crazy about pseudo Wudo. This guy's just getting thrown in the bulk box. So overall, these are all the fighting type Pokemon, of course, omitting the like pre-evolutions like I mentioned in the beginning. Um, I do think Stonejourner V Max will probably see some play. We'll see. It, it might just fall off after like the first tournament and never actually become an archetype in North America. I know it's seen some play at smaller Japanese tournaments. Uh, I think Regirock V is a solid card, but I don't see a spot for it right now. Uh, Claydol could see some single prize shenanigans, maybe even have its own deck. And then Grapple Locked, I'm not sure what's going to happen with that, but it's a very, very cool attack and it should have some potential at some point 
in its legality. So that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to uh, get notified when I have more videos out. I'll be doing a ton of Sword and Shield content both on here and live on Twitch. Uh, like I said in the beginning, check out PoTownStore.com and FlipSideGaming.com. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.